Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, family. Good morning, family. Good morning. Good morning, guys. We are here on a Tuesday. Oh, Lord. Somebody say we love God. <laughs> Good morning. Somebody say we love God. And Ciara had work last night. I commend you. Commend you. What time you got up for work last night? And she's always up here 6 a.m. sharp. Good morning, sis. Good morning, Cassandra. I'm telling you guys that um, I'm looking this way because I'm pulling up. I'm fancy today. I got the laptop today with me to help me as well. Um, let me see something. Yeah, guys, we up. We are up, up, up. It feels good. It's the honestly, it's the getting up. It's like once you up, yes, we love God. It's like once you up, it's okay. But it's the getting up that is like, oh. And I'm not a morning person. Like, I have to get back into it. You know, I used to work out in the mornings. Oh, you didn't have to work? Oh, okay. I thought you had to work when we was talking last night. But, um, I, I, I am so not a morning person. You know what I mean? But to be honest, the more I read the Bible, the saints got up in the morning. The saints got up in the morning and um, I misunderstood. I thought you were saying last night when we were talking that um, you were at work. Yeah, the saints got up in the morning. You know, um, when you when you read, they got up early in the morning to pray, to hear from God. Jesus always got up early in the morning to pray, to hear from God. And it's something that you're showing God that you're giving him your first fruits. You know, just like we read, we're going to read it again, how God says, um, you know, to give your first fruits with your increase and your profits. It's the same thing with our time. And to be honest, I find out that your day goes so much smoother when you started off with God, when you started right. You know, when you don't, um, you know, for us, we're picking up our phone and we're celebrating God. But if you're not picking up your phone and celebrating God, you know, the first thing you should be doing is just praying good morning and just hearing from him. So I'm, I'm just waiting a little second. I know everybody's chiming in before I get my free nuggets, but that is a free nugget, you know, but it's just something about just giving your morning to God. And I want to tell you something. I was um, consulting with, um, I call him Pastor Wisdom. Uh, you guys need to go follow him on Instagram and on Facebook. His name is Sam Wagner. He is just, actually, when I was doing the lives with, um, with special guests, he was one of the special guests. He is just so wise. And I was just, um, he was counseling me yesterday and we were speaking and he was telling me, you know, he was like, God is really pleased with you and everything. And you're, you're doing the right thing. You know, um, I'm not going to talk too much about it cause I, I, I don't want to give the haters nothing, but you know, a lot of people, and, and we talked about it when, when I was prophesying and, and, and I was teaching, I told you people, you know, they like, they want, they like, who are you to be preaching? Who are you? And this and that and the third and certificate, you know, all that drama. And I'm like, listen, it's in the fruit. People lives are changing from play to save ministries. People lives are changing. People lives are changing from the books that I publish. People lives are changing from me living right. And sometimes people have a Pharisee spirit. And I just want to apologize to you guys 
for anybody that you encountered in the church or anybody that you encountered that claims that they're a Christian and had a Pharisee spirit. And the more and more we do Bible study, you're going to find out and we're going to learn about the Pharisees. They pretty much are the people that put Jesus on the cross. And sometimes, you know, Pharisees, like Sam says, Pharisees, that Pharisee spirit, even though it's aggravating, and they're always trying to condemn you. They're pushing you to greatness. It was the Pharisees that, and, and the naysayers that pushed Jesus on that cross. Amen. For you and I. So, you know, sometimes it's a good thing, the haters. You know, Judas thought he was doing something. But, you know, his hating spirit and his jealous spirit and his greedy spirit led him, led Jesus on that cross. You know, so very encouraging to hear that God is very, yes, he is. Yes, he is. He is. And because I live right, I don't talk this thing. And I'm saying this like Paul did in a, in a godly boast. I'm not saying it in any way for a man should boast. I'm talking about in a godly boast. Like I paid the price to sit here. You know, I was talking to Kaylin and I was hurt yesterday and, and I was, I was crying yesterday because it's people that's trying to come against me. And that's how, you know, when you're doing right anyway, that's how, you know, when you're being elevated, because I knew that Satan was going to be mad when I publicly said, I'm going to come on five days a week. I knew he was going to be mad because he's like, all right, you already got three days shutting down. Good morning, sis. You already got those three days shut down. People are coming on. People are learning. Now you're talking about five days, but it hurts when it's your own. And, and, and sometimes in church, folks, it be like that. So I'm apologizing. I'm not going to dwell too much on them and give them nothing. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. We won't stop. Okay. We won't stop. Because this is what God called us to do. What's up, bro? Look, look. Uh, you know something? Look at God. Um, so we got our men on today, okay? All right, sisters, because we need our men. People is really chiming in, and I thank God for that. I thank God for that. But I'm apologizing to you for every Pharisee spirit. Come on, Holy Ghost, that you have ever accounted. I am apologizing to you for every person that said they were a Christian that was sitting up in church and judging you instead of pushing you and loving on you. I'm apologizing. I'm apologizing for them. For they not know what they do. For they not know the count or the loss that you go back for the one. Jesus leaves the 99 sheep to go back for the one. So I'm apologizing to you because they didn't use wisdom. That they're in, their, they're in that tradition, religious. That's what you call a religious state of mind. Let me tell you something. When Jesus called Paul out, he met him on the road of Damascus. Paul was um, um crucifying Christians and killing women and men. Do you hear what I'm telling you? And God went and had an encounter with Paul. Who is anybody to tell anybody that they can do anything? Because if anything, let me tell you something. Paul used to, let me see if I can find this thing. Paul had to tell Peter a couple of times about himself because Peter, because Peter was, uh, um, I, want, I don't want to say two-faced, but a little shaky. Peter, Peter, Peter was fearful. Let's just say like that. Peter was fearful. And this is for someone. This is a free nugget, which means that even if you got a fearful spirit, right? Anxiety spirit, God will use you and do something new. And we know that Peter always had that fearful mentality. Amen. He always had that fearful mentality. And, um... Paul had to tell Peter one time because Peter uh, 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 do the grace message with Paul. And as soon as the disciples come, he switch up and, and he's trying to do habits and trying to do tradition. And Paul was like, listen, that's one thing about the remnant. We're radical. We'll tell you in a minute. We don't care what certificate you have, what apostle is on your name. If you're wrong, you're wrong. And Paul said, you wrong, man. You wrong. You being two-faced it. I'm paraphrasing, but this is what he said. You're being two-faced it. And this is what's happening in the body of Christ. So I'm apologizing to you for every person that said that they were a Christian, for every person that was hooping and hollering in the church, but didn't, couldn't give you a ride home. Come on, somebody. For every person that you told them you were hungry, you had no money, and then they tell you to come back tomorrow. We're going to read that. Instead of supporting you, listen, it's one thing if God is saying, listen, because sometimes God I'd be like, don't get into that, but pray for them, but don't get into that. But it's a whole nother entity when you're just nasty and you're trying not to help because everybody's not your assignment. How do we know that everybody is not your assignment? Because, because Paul, 
If that was the case, the, the, the 12 disciples would have been able to preach to the Gentiles. But it was not the 12 disciples that preached to the Gentiles. It was Paul. God called Paul up to show the world that he can use anybody. And he used him to preach to the Gentiles because he was, he was just like one of them. Amen. Sometimes you need to see your own. God knows what he's doing with calling me up. Sometimes you need to see your own. Sometimes you need to see the person because I'm, I'm everybody. I'm the suburban mom. I'm the teenage mom. I'm the hood mom. I'm the sophisticated mom. I'm the educated mom. I'm the bust you upside your face mom. I'm the mind your business committee mom. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm the mom with the adult children. My oldest is 20. Sometimes you need to see someone that looks like you. I'm the one who went through uh, uh, deaths. I lost my husband. I was a widow before 30. So I can tell you about loss. I had to preach in, 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 in this one of the saddest days of my life, burying my sister. So listen, sometimes you need to see you. Amen. So when somebody's coming against me, because of what I'm doing. I'm not hurting nobody. I'm teaching the unadulterated truth of God. And the devil hates that. And the Pharisees hate that. And it's safe to say that the Pharisees had a devil spirit. Because Corinthians say that they're roaming like light in the church. Parading as light. So that means that you have people that acting like they love Jesus in the church. But their hearts are far from him. They're Satan himself. Satan's not moved by you going to church. Satan's not moved by you speaking in tongues. Satan's not moved by you hooting and hollering around the church. Satan is only moved when your life is fruitful. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Adversary only comes and bother you when you changing. When you changing. So I apologize on behalf of everyone who comes against you, who says they're in the body of Christ, who, who is moving you out of position to want to learn from him. I'm apologizing. I'm standing in the gap. I'm apologizing because they can come at me all they want. See, what they don't know is Fowl's a fighter. That's why God uses me because when life comes, I'm fighting life back. Like, let's go, baby. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not shifting for nobody unless God. I'm not shaking for nobody unless God. In fact, when you come against me, it makes me more powerful and it makes me want to seek him more. But everybody doesn't have that mentality. Everybody doesn't have that mentality. So last night when I was laying in the bed, I, I was talking with God. I said, God, I'm apologizing to my flock that you sent me on behalf of your people. Because sometimes they need to hear that. I'm not coming over here talking about a hater, talking about what they're trying to do. Instead, I'm going to apologize for every hater, for every naysayer, for every person that says that they were Christians and came against you. I'm apologizing for them. Because if they was living right, they would have came and they would have pulled you out like I'm doing. You don't talk about them, you pull them out. Mm. I'm sorry, y'all. I got to speak in tongues on that. Because I'm telling you, the enemy wants to discourage you. The enemy wants to detour you. And I'm trying to build you up. That is the whole meaning of us getting up now, five days a week. And some telling me, probably going to give us a, a Saturday to it. But right now, five days a week. <laughs> That's why we talk about the Holy Spirit. They want to talk about haters. They want to talk about your feelings. I'm trying to teach you how to witness spiritual warfare, baby, because spiritual warfare is real. Once you start living right, here comes Satan. Here comes Satan. I want to read something to you. I want to read something to you. Thank God we got the computer today. John 10, 10. I want to read something to you. Because I'm not lying. The thief comes not except to steal. Well, listen, the thief does not come. This, excuse me. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and they that they may have it more abundantly. How do you know the fruits? See, God is taking us somewhere else. Are we supposed to continue in wisdom? And this is connected to wisdom because this is how you have discernment. This is how you know who is who. So you don't get caught up in crazy doctrines. You don't get caught up in people that saying they got one thing because they got a title over their head because they prophetess this and they apostle that. Let me tell you something. The guy in Brooklyn was a pastor and him and his father been there for years. But that didn't mean that he wasn't raping his daughter for years and had to shut the church down. Come on, somebody. 
Come on, somebody. I don't care about your title. What's your fruit looking like? If you're prophesying to me, is it coming out right? Is it coming out right? Are you prophesying or are you prophesying? Because every time that God speaks to me and I speak a word, honey, it always comes to pass. And if it doesn't come to pass, I'm in your business. One or the other. I'm either telling you things to come or I'm telling you things that's happening and I don't know your business. I don't know your business. That ain't nothing but the Lord. That is, that is coming from an obedient spirit. You see, God said when you seek him and you come in hither and you seek him, he said he will reveal things to you. And what happens is people don't like the revelations that you get. People don't like when God is talking to you and they feel like that they went to seminary school and they've been reading and they've been doing all of the traditional stuff, but they have no relationship. They have no relationship. It's everything is a habitual. Everything is a habit. Good morning. It's a habit. But there's no relationship. So then here you come out of nowhere. Like Pastor Sam said, Foul. Here you coming out of nowhere. And people are in their feelings now. Where this girl come from? And Cora wearing her sweatbands. Uncle Magic and Dana and Chanel and them shouting her out. Uh, people, people with... Uh, um, prestigious multi-millionaires is, 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 is listening to you. Who is she? A servant who said yes, who paid the price. I never, I never left God. And when I did, I always came back. When I was in pain and the faith was shaky and I was crying and I said, God, what are you doing to me and my children? But I said, still, though you slay me, I love you. I'm not going to leave you because you never left me. Something's going to come up out of this. Something's going to happen. And I trusted him and I held on to the him and his garment. It was times that I'd be crying in my house, y'all. And in my mind, I felt like it was the hem of his feet. And I would be on the floor and I would be crying and I'd be like, Jesus. I need you. I paid the price to sit here. I paid the price. And you will pay the price too. You will. You will. But I am equipping you that you will learn how to do it with your head up high. When I saw you got Satan. And that's why people are, are really in their feelings about what we're doing. Because this movement here is powerful. This movement is built on faith and works. With Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. It's not built on tradition. It's not built on certificates. It's not built on the foolishness. This is the unadulterated truth. I never come up here telling you my opinion. My opinion don't count. I tell you that all the time. My opinion don't count. The only thing that counts is this word here. Because I can sit up here and be opinionated. Come on, you know I'm from the hood. You know hood folks. We always got something to say. I can find a million things to say. But that's not my place. That's why even when I post on Facebook, you know when I'm posting my opinion because I say it comes from me and you know when it comes from God. We need wisdom. This is the hour that you cannot lack wisdom. This is the hour, this is the hour that you cannot, that you cannot say, you know, I don't know. And no, this is not that hour. This is the hour you need wisdom. You need wisdom. Wisdom is the principle of life. Wisdom is the principle of life. It's a principle. And we spoke and we talked about principles. We talked about principles um, all through our series. And I told you principle is, is, is like losing weight. You got to eat 80% right. 20% working out equals the equation is you lose weight. That's a principle. No matter what, nobody can defy a principle. And the principle of life is if you have wisdom, if you abide in wisdom, you will see the grace of God because you need wisdom and understanding to truly have a true connection with God. I tell you all the time, you cannot be satisfied with a mama and them teaching. Mama and them love God so and they pray for me so I'm covered. Yeah, to a certain extent God is a covenant he'll protect you but you won't have the fruits like I have you won't have the power to say I am healed God I got a headache in the mighty name of Jesus take this headache away oh God my finances ain't right, ain't right. in the mighty name of Jesus give me the mindset to create wealth and find a good job and this and the third you need that power and in order to tap into that power you have to have wisdom to, to sustain you you gotta have wisdom excuse me guys you have to have wisdom you have to have wisdom. You have to have wisdom. 
I want to pull that out. Um, remind me, guys. I want to pull that up. But let me, because we 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 were on this, and and something telling me I want to stay on this, because Holy Spirit's telling me go back to this because you guys need this. So let's just start back from chapter one, right? I mean, for verse one, for this is Proverbs three. I'm reading from the New King James Version. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For the length of days and long life and peace they will find and add to you. So what is he saying? He's saying when you have a relationship with me, you will live long and you will have peace. I have peace. No matter who tries to come up against me, I have peace. I keep, I keep my peace. Why? Because peace got, Jesus said the world did not give you peace and they not, and they cannot take it away from you. So how can they not take it away from me? By me staying in the word of God, knowing that a vengeance is mine, say the Lord. The Lord says that you are not to be out here arguing. You are not to be out here cussing out somebody. You are not to be out here hitting somebody upside their head because I avenge for you, says the Lord. I avenge for you, says the Lord. I avenge for you. In fact, let's pull it up. I'm on one today. Because they guess what? Everything, everything I say is backed by the word. Let's let's pull that up. Let's pull that up. Because I need you to know it ain't me. It ain't me that says anything. So Psalms 94. Oh Lord, the God who avenges. O oh God who avenges, reveal your splendor. Right? That's one. I want you to get it. There's one thing about God. He's consistent in what he says. <clears throat> Let's see. Exodus 14, 14. I want you guys to get this. Exodus 14, 14. <clears throat> the Lord would fight for you and you shall hold your peace. And I can go on and on and on because so many scriptures on that. We also got Deuteronomy, I believe, 1 and 8. So he said, the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. What is God saying? You don't got to argue with, with me, 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 Because if you living right for me and if you're sustained in me, What's in the dark comes to the light. So if there's no dark in you, the only thing that they can see is light. Now that's good. Yeah, Daryl, that's good. That's good. If there's no darkness in you, the only thing that they can see is light. So when they're coming against you and you light, they're coming against me, Fallon. And if they're coming against me, Fallon, thus say the Lord, then I got the avenge for you. Do you understand what I'm saying? If they coming against you and you're living right and you stuck in wisdom and your mind is set on him and you're not arguing and you're not trying to come against them and bash them back. God says, I got to fight for you, but you got to remain in peace. You got to remain in peace. You shall hold your peace. You shall hold your peace. Because your fruit will speak for you. How do you know? How do you know a man is who they say they are by the fruit? That's why I tell women, I don't care what 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 they come trying to say, trying to sweep you off your feet. Watch the fruit, baby. Watch how they act when things don't go well. Watch how they act when somebody get on their nerve. Come on, somebody. Same thing with the woman. She act like she for you. Act like you broke. My brothers, pray like, play like you broke a little bit. Pray like you lost it all. Sometimes the Bible says test all things. That's what the word of God says to test all things. Act like you broke a little bit. See if mama really down for you or is she down for the cash? Come on, somebody. Wisdom. Discernment. How do you know Fowl is who she says she is? Because I stay consistent in my walk with him. You have watched Fowl hold her peace. You have watched me. When they killed my sister, I sat. I got hits. Over thousands and thousands of hits on that Facebook. And God said, I need you to get on Facebook Live and you pray for those killers. We didn't even catch. They didn't even catch the killers yet. I said, you want me to pray for the killers? Yes, Fowl. And I want you to mean what you say. And I got on there and prayed in tears. That's what obedience and sacrifice look like. Don't tell me who and what can and cannot do anything. Our fruit, we pray to slay over here. 
And I was obedient. And I meant that. Then it came to find out that there was the two boys and one of the boys who sent the boys in the backyard is related to my... Listen. Listen. Y'all don't know the half I got to go through. Y'all don't know the half. But I keep God first. I keep God first. So I got up there and I prayed and I said, God said that he will sustain me, that he will make sure my mother get justice. But I'm praying for the people that killed my 21 year old sister because they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they did. They don't know the families they, they hurt it. They don't know that Millie got to grow without a mama out here rebelling because she missed her mama. And I had to mean that thing. And the next thing you know, they found them killers. They went all the way down south to catch those killers. Why? Because it was a, it was a praying family. Come on, somebody. A praying family was backed up behind that. It didn't take them years to catch the killers. God said, let's, put, let's read this again. God said, the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. That's Exodus 14, 14. Every battle don't got to be fought. You don't got to tell mama and them what's on your mind. Mama, I'm sorry if you're watching. We ain't talking about your baby. <laughs> That's the problem. And see, when you in wisdom, when you in wisdom, listen, yesterday it hurt me because the crucifying is coming because I'm powerful. Let me tell you something. In order for you to, to be able to do the fivefold ministry that I'm doing organically, that's power. People that have titles and all that, they don't like that. That's that Pharisee spirit. They don't like that. Who are you? But God said, you stay in, permit, in formation and do what I told you to do. It hurt me. Tears came rolling down my eyes yesterday, y'all. Because I'm like, this church folk, this ain't the world. The world is, the world is coming. It's the church folk that's, that's mad now. Why are you mad? Didn't you see over 50,000 hits? I think, no, I'm lying. We like at 100,000 now? When, my spray, when I preach my sister's eulogy, don't you see people putting down the blunts, putting down the liquor, cursing a little less? What are you mad about, Pharisee? And this is how the world would do you when you're living right. And thank God for Pastor Sam. I call him the pastor of wisdom because he's so wise. He said, let me tell you something. You stay in position and you do what God told you to do. God spoke to my heart and told me to tell you that he's pleased with you and he's pleased with your works. He said, they did it to me and the same people are telling me now, I thank God you didn't listen to me. He said, they want to come and distract you and it's a jealous spirit. That's why in the beginning I had to apologize to you for my church folks that have hurt you because many of you have been hurt by church. I know you have. And you have to understand when you go in that building, it's between you and God. You're not going there for nobody else. When I used to listen, people be like, Fallon, I'm trying to get your attention. I'm, trying. I'm like, oh, girl, I'm so sorry. I was just focused on the song. If the choir is singing or I'm focused on the word, I don't care what you got on. I don't care who had. I don't care who's sleeping with who. I'm coming because I need Jesus. And that's how your mind frame has to be. You cannot let nobody stop your why. You cannot let nobody stop you in your relationship with Jesus. You got to fight for that thing. You got to fight for that. You got to fight for that. And you have to understand that the Bible has, has strategically gave us instructions for every little thing. That's why I love the word of God. Because he don't lie. Because if you really listen, the Bible is informative. It's, instruction, it's, instruction, it's for structure. It's structurative. I made that word up. It's, he speaks in metaphors, parables. So sometimes you got to really look at what he's trying to say metaphorically. Look at how the Pharisees represent church folk. Those were, those were people who were stuck in traditions. Those were religious folks. So sometimes people don't have a relationship. They're religious. And we have learned that this walk is not about a religion. It is a relationship. Jesus hated religion. I said what I said. Jesus was all about relationship. How do we know that Jesus hated religion? Because on the Sabbath, he would heal someone. When they're talking about you can't do this on the Sabbath and you can't do that on the Sabbath. But like he said, you make sure you receive your money on the Sabbath though. But he healed people on Sabbath. He was trying to show us that he would move outside of a religion. He would move outside the normal to come back for the one. He'll leave the 99. It's 630, wow. You have to understand.
understand that through wisdom that the world was based and grounded. It was through God's wisdom that formed this world. You need wisdom. Wisdom will sustain you. Wisdom will tell you they hate and I got to keep going on. Wisdom will be knocking at your door along with the Holy Spirit telling you, don't let depression and anxiety get a hold of you, baby. It's trying to distract you. It's trying to get you off course. Wisdom is a principle of God. It's a principle. It's a principle. Let's go down. Verse 3, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. So what is God saying? Stop trying to figure out everything. I don't know why church folk act a fool. I don't know why people act crazy. I don't know why sometimes we learn more in pain than we do when everything is going good. Those are the hidden treasures. God said in Isaiah, his ways are not like our ways. His mind is not like our mind. I don't understand some things. Even in the end, sometimes it would speak for itself and it would show. But you have to realize that when you're walking with God, you're full. You're in full submission. That means everything is holded to him. Your finances, your mind, your life, everything. I tell you down to what you will. It was one time, I'll never forget this. I was, and this was years ago. I was in the LES, Lower East Side with my mother and them. And I had packed some poom poom shorts. And I mean, you know, I'm kind of thick. So they was up there. And, and usually I'd have been feeling like I'm stepping like, yeah, I look good. It's hot. I was highly convicted. I kept looking down and I kept looking. My mom's like, what's wrong with you? I said, I can't wear this. I don't feel right. I don't feel right. I, I, I don't, and I didn't look coochie-ish, but it just, God it was doing something new in me. And when he was taking me, it just, it, it just, it didn't feel right. So I took it off. Every aspect of your life, there God is. God, do you want me to take this job? God, should I get in this relationship? God, should my child go to this school? Every being, every intensity, seek him first. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Because why? Wisdom, wisdom, your own wisdom is nothing but worldly wisdom. You got to understand there's a worldly wisdom, there's a worldly scholar, and then there's a godly scholar, there's godly wisdom. Two different intensities. The worldly wisdom would tell you what you mean, uh, um, you know, pay God first with your tithes or God told you to sit down and don't, you know, when God told me to sit down for those two years, right? I'm back at the lab and stuff now, but he has sat me down for two years. In between those two years, I lost people. I lost my sister, was diagnosed with a brain tumor that he healed me from. I got to make sure I always say that. So all of these entities that was coming against me. So when he was telling me this and I was telling people this, that's why you can't tell everybody what God is telling you because they won't get it. They like, what are you talking about? He told you, Sarah, you got children. But out of the blue, somebody would call me and be like, listen, God told me to give you. I remember even, it, even down to people that's not in the church. One, I think she's watching. One girl hit me up and was like, God told me to tell you to give you $500. And I said, but God, what about my children? But she was obedient. And I bet you God, I always see her on trips. God double her portion. So God will, God will provide whatever he's telling you. He will provide provision. That's why whenever God is in it, he, it will be fruitful. He will provide for you. So even though the world is telling you, oh, that don't sound right. You, you got to listen to what God is telling you. And there's going to be some folks that are, have a relationship with God and they won't see the vision. When God met, when God met Peter on the, I mean, Paul on the road to Damascus, right? Some of them saw the light, but they didn't hear what he was saying to Paul. Only Paul heard. They saw the light. They knew Paul was having an encounter. So some will see that God is doing something in you. They see something, but they don't, they can't hear what he's saying to you. So I tell you, when you read in these, when you read in these scriptures, you got to look at it too metaphorically, symbolically to your life. Hey, sis, you come on now. You know, I ain't lying. I teach the truth. You have to understand that this word, this walk is real. That's why I tell you, don't get caught up with people when they're trying to fight you about this word, when they're trying to tell you that this word and this and that. Don't, don't listen. Let your life speak. Don't even debate. 
I never forget, I was a rapper, I ain't gonna say his name because you know my husband was, used to hang out with a lot of people and for a long time I hung out with them. And we had a big debate. We was up there drinking and all that. And I'm all drunk, call myself arguing with him about Jesus. And, and, and next thing you know, me and him, it spurred out to Twitter. We arguing. Then his wife was mad at him because she loved us some foul and everything. And we made up. But it was like, you're not. And I, I remember the next day, God showed me a scripture about debate. And you don't debate about the word of God. Your life speaks. Your life speaks. I don't have to prove nothing to nobody. If you got to come on a live and you subliminally bashing me on your live, then homegirl, I'm praying for you. Because you ain't right. You in error. Touch not the anointing. Let me tell you something. Although I was hurt about homegirl live and she was symbolically, symbolically trying to come against me, metaphorically, all God kept telling me, no matter what, she's anointed. She's stuck in her flesh because that's jealousy. But touch not my anointed. Be careful what you say about her. Everything that Saul did to David, no matter what, David never talked against Saul. It was opportunities where David could have took Saul in the head. He could have killed Saul. It was times that when the Bible says that Saul went in the cave to, to doodle. He went in the cave to move his bowels and David saw them and crept up on them. And all David did was cut after the power of the Holy Spirit. He cut the hem of his, his garment to let him know, I could have I could have cut you, homie. I could have took your head off, homie. But God said to leave you alone. Why? Exodus 14. 14 God said I avenge you hold your peace touch not the anointed so even though she's in her feelings who got certificate who doing this and basing her lives on people God said touch not my anointed you be careful what you say about her because I do see there's an anointing there but people are jealous because God is moving us Pray to slay is going from here. And we not backed up off of all that traditional stuff. We are grounded in the word of God. He's doing something new. I told you the other day I had a millionaire wake me up. Woke me up out of my sleep to me. I need you to pray for my platform. Those are divine interconnection connections. The, all that is divine from God. Because I couldn't do that. I would screw it up. I talk too much. I'm a, I'm, I could be opinionated. So I will screw that up. But these connections that's coming is from God. You are saved. Stop saying you're not fully saved, Millie. You are saved. You're walking the walk. You're going through your journey. Every time you, you publicly, every time you publicly say that, you are staggering your growth. No, the Bible says to see, speak those things as though as you see them, even if you don't, you are saved. You are covered by the blood of God. We talked about with the power of authority. That's giving you a clutch to kind of still do what you want to do. So you try to hold on to that. No, I, listen, God, I know you got me. You got my mind. You got to speak that. You are saved. You get up at 6 a.m., honey, to hear the word of God. You walking right. You walking right. You walking right. You have to teach your child. And dear, all of y'all, let me tell you something. All of y'all who are on this world, you got to make sure your children get it too. I sit at this table and I break bread with my children. They got to know the word. You can't keep getting it for yourself so it can sustain them. So it can sustain them. Verse 7. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. That's tithing. That's sowing. We talked about that. So when people talk about why they got to tithe and sow, that's why. And then he tells you why. That's what I love about God. He will always tell you why. He says, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. He said, you will always have, and it won't be old stuff either. You always have a new meal. You will always have a new meal. Amen. Amen. But they keep talking about you. I'm going to be walking around making that. I don't know what you said, Millie. Get out your flesh, mama. Get out your flesh. Don't. That's flesh talking, baby. Stay, stay focused. We don't, we don't care. We, we don't, we ain't, we don't, we ain't shifting. We growing. We growing. We growing. You, we moving forward. We moving forward. We moving forward. Because let me tell you something. And this is why I would never do a, a, a whole ministry. You know, people talk about all oh, the haters, this, and they building their whole ministry on that so they could get hooling and hollering and amens. Let me tell you something. You need haters. Haters pushes you to destiny. For every Bible story, there was a hater. 
David had a hater. Daniel had a hater. Come on, somebody. Joseph had a hater. Come on, somebody. Saul was a hater that God turned around. We praying for them that they, and Saul turned around and, and God changed his name to Paul. You need a hater. Jesus had a hater. He had haters. You need haters. It elevates you. Come on, somebody. That's why we don't get stuck on that. It elevates you. Verse 11, my son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. So when God is correcting you and somebody is correcting you, don't get in your feelings. That's what God is trying to tell us. Don't get in your feelings because it means that God loves you. If he's taking the time and he's correcting you, he has a plan for you. But if he's letting you do what you do, that means you belong to Satan. He like, all right, because there's a verse in the Bible. He tells the, he tells the church, he says, well, let them go and let Satan have his way with them. And then they shall see and come back and you open them with open arms. Good morning, Kara. So if God is chastising you, he's not that he, he's mad and, and he hates you. He's saying, listen, the only way sometimes you're going to learn is if you get knocked on that head sometime. It's like a kid. You keep telling him, don't touch that fire. Don't cuss that fire. Don't touch that fire. But when you sit there and kind of let that fire just burn them just a little bit, they're like, okay, I ain't touching that fire no more. Same thing with us adults. So he says, for whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son in whom him he delights. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than proper to silver, the importance of wisdom. With wisdom, you don't need money. See, wisdom creates money. Look at Jeff Bozo and all of them. When he started that picture I put up, when he started Amazon and that little office, he had to borrow money to get that little office. And it was, it was his strategy, it was his wisdom that allowed people, he gave them the idea, like, listen, I got this idea, I don't need this money. He said he got a million dollars for that one, a million dollars for that one. He used wisdom, and wisdom brought him the profits. Wisdom brings provision. Wisdom is, wisdom is stronger than provision. Wisdom, wisdom brings forth provision. Amen. Amen, Nelly. You got to study. You got to study with your kids. Okay, so for her proceeds are better than profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. So he said, you to gain more wisdom is more precious than gaining gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. He said, so everything that you would desire in life cannot compare to wisdom. Then that's, I need, that means I need that. In fact, wisdom is so strong. Look, look at this. Let's go to, let's go to James. Let's go to James one and five. This is how much wisdom is. So let's matter of fact, I don't want to go to five. I'm going to read from two. My brother, count it all on joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect in all and complete lacking nothing. So look now notice what he says before he's saying lacking nothing. He says lacking nothing. But then he says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach meaning finding fault and it will be given to him so do you notice that he said before he told you to ask for wisdom he said that you will be lacking nothing but if you feel like you're lacking something he didn't say pray for money he didn't say pray for finances he didn't say pray for a boo he didn't say pray for a job he said pray for wisdom if you're lacking anything pray for wisdom why because wisdom is more precious than rubies and gold so if you have wisdom you have everything my god it's a word it's a word. The power of wisdom. It's a word. That's why I, I tell people, don't just read that scripture, but sometimes you got to read the prefix and the suffix of a thing. You got to go before the, the sentence before and the sentence afterwards because it tells you what that whole sentence that you're caught on what it means. So if he's telling you to pray for wisdom, but before he tells you to pray for wisdom, he says, so you can lack nothing Then he's trying to tell you something. He dropped the Jew. It's a word. He's telling you that wisdom is powerful, that in order for you to receive nothing, you got to have, in order for you to receive everything, you got to have wisdom. And if you're lacking something, you're lacking wisdom. He said, you're not lacking the money. You're not lacking nothing. You're lacking wisdom. Because why? A person can have, you and I can have $100. If you got wisdom and I don't, your $100 is going to turn into $100,000 and my $100 is going to turn into zero. Why? Wisdom. Some of you, I tell you all the time, we're praying for money, but we have no, we have no financial literacy. So you can't even be sustained with the money. 
That's why when Cash App was offering stocks and stuff, people were laughing at me. I was buying, I was buying them up. I was buying them up. Now every time I keep hitting and talking about here, you made one cent here, you made two cent here, you made a dollar here. It's passive income. But as I read Rich Dad Poor Dad and all these books that these rich people are writing, they're telling me that they're getting rich off of passive income. You looking for the fast route. But they they they're doing the Bible principles when Solomon said you can get rich by little by little. Wisdom said, you go ahead and take advantage of that. You hear what I'm telling you? You, you need wisdom. You need wisdom. That's why you got to focus. I got to read that again. I got to read that again. He said, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Then he goes, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. That's powerful. That is powerful. So you mean to tell me that you're telling me before I pray for wisdom, I'm lacking something. And what I'm lacking is not money. It's not business partners. It's not business deals, but I'm lacking wisdom because wisdom will tell you who to wisdom will tell you who to partner with wisdom will tell you what business to go into wisdom. Wisdom will tell you what to do. Thank you, sis. I need that. I need the shrimp. I need the strength to get up here to have a word every day because this is this is big business that we're doing every day. It's easy to come up with a word three times a week, but every day, but God got us. So we're looking and we're thinking we need another dollar. We're thinking we need another business partner. We're thinking we need another boo. We're thinking we need to lose more weight. And God is thinking, no, you need more wisdom. You need more wisdom. Because wisdom will tell you, listen, I noticed that when I'm eating more pork and more things that got a lot of salt, I'm holding more weight. So I'm and which scientifically is right. So wisdom will be like, oh, OK, I need to cut down on the pork or maybe I need to, you know, wisdom be like, oh, I need to drink more water. You need wisdom. People underestimate the value of wisdom. Wisdom is more precious than people who are educated. And I'm all for education. I told my daughter says she want to be a therapist. You got to go to school for that. I tell my kids, school ain't for everybody. If you got a trade, then go to school for it. But if you got a strategy, then you need to read some books and educate yourself and go for it. But I have been set in position, check this, where wisdom has took me. Wisdom is so precious and will elevate you so much that I'm able to sit here and teach the word of God through wisdom, through the Holy Spirit. Not seminary school didn't teach me these things. I was talking to a lady who said she was a pastor and I'm telling her about what I read in Galatians about um, Paul and Peter. And she's like, I never read that. Why? That was wisdom. I seek God and he gives me wisdom. Wisdom tells you to keep reading these scriptures. That's what wisdom does. That's what wisdom does. Wisdom is a principle. I tell you all the time, you have to, you have to, you have to stay connected to principles. So many people, I'm so broke, I'm so broke. The principle is when you tie, you reap what you sow. It's times that I have sold out of poverty. That's the principle. God said to test him on that. He said, if, if you give, that I gotta, I gotta fill your bombs up. It's in Proverbs, and then he talked about in Malachi. It's a principle. It's a principle. So if he's telling me that wisdom is a principle, then, I, then that means I need to hold on to it. If you're telling me in James 1, 4, that if anyone lacks anything, and then you're telling me a 5 to pray for wisdom, then that means that's the key right there. I tell you all the time, success equals clues. That's the clue. That's the clue. How can I go from glory to glory? Wisdom. Wisdom. So when people are mad at me, they're not mad at me. They're mad at the wisdom that God has prevailed through me. Wisdom is powerful. Wisdom has had me move the life that I, I couldn't even dream of. Even with the bad things that have gone through in my life. I always wanted to be in the suburbs. I always wanted my children to be molded and cultivated the way they are. And I'm living the life of my dreams. See, everybody, listen, everybody dreams is different. Some might be a million dollars. Some might be this. But see, with me, it's family. It's seeing my children know God. It's seeing my, I pray, I pray that my children would never stop the lineage of knowing God. Everybody prays different. 
That's my prayer. God, please make sure that my children's children know you. Everybody prayer is different. Everybody accomplishments, accomplishments, accomplishments is different. What you accomplish in life is different. That's why you can't look at somebody else and that portion, everybody portion is different, but you don't know what people are praying for. And I have learned through wisdom that when you're praying to God and you're praying to him for something, and if he's pleased, he'll bless you with something totally different. He'll, he'll blow your mind. He'll give you that and some more. That's why the Bible says to seek first the kingdom of God and all things will be added. Oh God, oh foul, you praying that my child, that your children's children will love on me? So how about now you got some children that's just grounded, that always know the word of God, that even if when they act up, they got to come back and got to. It's wisdom. I have learned to be particular how I pray. I have learned to please God because what does the Bible say? Hebrews eleven seven. it is impossible to please God without faith. It's impossible to please him without faith. I really, um, hopefully, well, we back on Monday through Friday. So I want to have that scripture. I'm going to have that scripture for you on, um, cause it's in my notes on tomorrow because I, I want you to, I want you to read and with, and with wisdom, you have to understand. Cause guess what? It takes wisdom and understanding just to believe that God is God. That's a godly wisdom, not a worldly wisdom. A worldly wisdom is different. A worldly wisdom always got to have some type of scientific flow behind it and all these other things. But the things of God is mysterious. It's a, diff it's a whole different entity than what the world talks. Mm -hmm. Good morning. So I'm going to make sure I have that scripture up for you because I want you to read, because I tell you everything I said today, I'm backing up. I want you to see how, um, let me see if the um, website is going to pick up. I want you to see how Paul had to tell um, Peter, you being phony. That's why I tell you, don't get caught up in these church folks. But he, he, Paul had to tell Peter. And here, Peter been saved longer than Paul. But through wisdom, Paul had a different wisdom. That's why I tell you everybody, assignment ain't your assignment. If Peter could do what Paul did, Paul would have had that, that encounter with God. They couldn't preach to the Gentiles. Paul did. Paul did. If you try to teach somebody something, you trying to show them something and they don't get it, don't, don't bother yourself. That means it's not your assignment. God, will, God lets you sow that seed in them and somebody else will come along the way and water it. And then God will bloom it and, and, and it will be ready for harvest. I pray that this blessed you. We're consistent. We're on five days a week now. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. You want to sow in this word, you guys know. PayPal me, uh, Foul God, Cash App, Foul God. I do have Zelle. I got I, I to gotta see what the name is for that. Um, you want to buy the book, payhip.com slash Falgod, no, Fallon Brown Publisher, LTD. Listen, it will be in the links. I don't got time to do all that. We're we not doing that. We're not going to solicit this word. It'll be in the links. You feel like you want to sew. You feel like you want to buy a book. You want to, you feel like you want to buy a waist trimmer. It will be in the links. Uh, Instagram, you know, if you want to sew, you DM me. I want y'all to more focus on this word. God will move you to, to, to sew if you need to, but I want you to focus on this word. I want you to focus on wisdom. I want you to focus. Listen, with things that God is putting in us, that's why, I, you know, I thank God that we're growing, but I know in my heart, these, these teachings, I'm not for everyone. I know my, who my flock is. But we're learning the deep things of God. That's why we had to teach about the Holy Spirit. I'm not coming on here trying to be popular, teaching what's popular. We're we not teaching about haters. And if we're teaching about hating, we're teaching on it on a biblically standpoint. So you will know that your haters elevate you. Amen. You need the Holy Spirit. You need to know your authority. Some of you guys need to go to my YouTube channel, Fallon Brown, and look at all those teachings, all those series that we did on authority, that we did on the power of our tongue, power of speaking. God is trying to transform you because why? It is a spiritual warfare. It is our walk is spiritual. It's more than hooping and hollering. Because if you walk for real, if you walk for real, you're going to be tested. Why? Because the Bible says that the devil walks around like a roaring lion to devour you. He said that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So if that's what his mission is, then you got to know how to stay prayed up. You got to know how to stand your ground. You got to know how this has to be. Because what did we talk about yesterday? Some of us are so built up that we don't let people come against us, but it'll be us against us. It'll be you versus you. 
Because the enemy will use your mind. You welcome. You welcome. All glory to God. This is all glory to God because I'm going to keep it real with you. I would never get up here six days, five days a week. Maybe two, maybe three. I'd never get up here five days a week. It is all the glory to God. And today's the off day. I don't have nothing to do today but take my son to the dentist. I don't have to do the other job. So this is God. But when you want a mandate, you say yes to God, then you do what God says. I have come to learn I do what God says. Because I know my, my whole mission is to build up the kingdom and shame the devil. I tell you, oh, keep talking about me. Keep coming. Because we, what I told you, I'm on my Tyra Perry. While they talking about script, who got a certificate, who, who's a apostle, who's a, 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 who's a written down prophetess, I'm going to be over here prophesying while you prophet lying. I'm going to be over here saving souls. I'm going to be over here building the kingdom while y'all over here arguing. Yeah, that part. Yeah, that part. That's what Fowl gonna be doing. No, not six days, Ciara. You tried it. We five days right now. If I said six days, it was a mistake. <laughs> to God tells me, if God tells me to sit my butt here on a Saturday, I will. Right now, we Monday through Friday. <laughs> but listen, I commend y'all too, because y'all getting up with me. I see I was getting mentions early. Some people was up 448 in the morning on Instagram mentioning me like I'm ready for the word. That makes me feel good. That knows that I'm doing right. Listen, you always go by the fruit. I don't care what a person says. You go by that fruit. I don't care what title they got in front of their name. That dude in Brooklyn had a title. His papa and them was pastors. They all was pastors. And they was in them molesting that baby and touching on women. So you go by the fruit. You go by the fruit. You tried it, Millie. <laughs> you go by the fruit. You hear what I'm telling you? The fruit. And you test the word. You test what come out of somebody's mouth. Is it biblical? You test the spirit. Is the spirit coming from the flesh or is this coming from God? Is this the Holy Spirit? I love you too, bro. Is this the Holy Spirit? Millie said, good morning, Cece. Is this God? Is this God speaking? Is this the wisdom of God? Or is this his feelings? That's why as soon as I laid down and I was talking to God last night, I said, God, I, I got to apologize to your people that have been hurt, church hurt. I didn't get up here and spitting out names and telling you who was trying to come at me and all that because I know it comes with the territory. But instead, I came and I apologized and stand in the gap for all those church folk who has a Pharisee spirit who came against you, who crucified you instead of trying to help you. You feel like somebody is out of order? Then you, if you in position to teach them, you say, you know what, sis? Here, let me show you how to do this. But people rather talk about you and knock you down than to help you. That's the issue. Especially in the body of Christ when we should be one. I don't know what other people are doing. But I know what God told me to do. And I know that my mission is to make sure that you are grounded in the word. The unadulterated word. So that means it's sometimes that God. You see Thursday. That Thursday when God had me prophesying to y'all. It was things that was tough. But it had to be said. Because real prophets come and they bring forth a word. That tells you the things in your heart. Jesus sat at that wheel. And he told that lady at the wheel. He said yeah and you. You. You, you with a lot of men. It ain't none of them your husband. But I come to give you water that you'll never thirst again. So that means you correct, but you do it in love. You do it in love. Jeremiah and all them. Jeremiah always was crying. Always was hurt. Because he always had a word that didn't nobody really want to hear. He telling them they got to go back into submission. They got to go back. Why everybody else was telling them they coming out. Come on, somebody. Are you prophet lying to me? You said you're a prophet. Where's your fruit? Where's your fruit? Because there are a lot of people prophet lying. And there are a lot of big time names that's sleeping around, sleeping with boys, and doing all of these things that they shouldn't be doing with a title behind their name. Get over that title stuff. Where's your fruit? Can we save the people? Can we save the people? Because we out here perishing. My Bible says that people die. People perish for a lack of knowledge. You need wisdom. Yeah, that part. That part. 
And you and check this. You forever a student. It's times I'm sitting here and I'm studying with my children and I'm learning something new. It was through my children. Church didn't teach me that the tree of life was right next to the, uh, the, the, the tree of, uh, of knowledge and wisdom. Studying with my children. My son said, oh my God, wait, Ma, you mean to tell me? And my daughter said that the tree was right there, Ma, that they could have ate from any other tree. The tree of life was right next to the tree that, that's killing us. And now we got to die because of them. Yeah, baby, that part. You learn something new. I, I learned from the kids. So people who try to act like they, oh, I know the scriptures. No, you don't because you learn something new every day in this. Every day you learn something new. You can read the same scripture a hundred times and learn something diff a hundred times different. That's the mysteries of God. Instagram is going to cut off. I'm going to end it and then come back so we can pray and then we done. I got time today. <laughs> I'm going to bring it back up so we can pray because we have to end in prayer. We have to end in prayer. And that to me, that's metaphorically teaching us how you want what you want. Your promise is right there. But you picking this. They were standing in the middle of the Garden of Eden right by side, right by side each other. And then when they picked the wrong thing, God what, what he did, he closed off the tree of life. He closed off the tree of life. And then comes Jesus and everything else to solidify what it needs to be solidified. Wisdom is your best friend. We read in Exodus 14, 14, we don't have comebacks and snapbacks. That's, that's corny now. In 2020, that's corny. I mean, sometimes you got to put people in their place, yeah. But most of the time, let God avenge. It's sweeter. It's sweeter when God avenges. It is so much sweeter when God avenges. What the Exodus 14, 14 said? He said, give it to God. Let God avenge and you hold your peace. You don't got to have a comeback. That's corny in 2020. We're not doing that. We don't care about haters. We don't care about snapping back. We care about wisdom because our Bible is teaching us that wisdom is wisdom is your provision. You need wisdom. We need wisdom. We don't need another, we don't need another idol. Because we, even in the church, we are making pastors and bishops our idols. We don't need another idol. We need a relationship with God. We need that wisdom deep down. So then now when somebody's saying something, they're only confirming what God already told you through wisdom using the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. That's what we need. That's what we need in this hour. That's what we need in this hour. Let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. We're going to, we're going to a couple more minutes. Verse 16, the length of her days in her right hand. This is Proverbs three and all her paths are peace. So when you're walking in wisdom, there's peace. Mm -hmm. There's peace. Coco said, this is for me. There's peace. See, some of you, I was watching Joyce Myers one day, and you know, I love her. Excuse me, y'all. I love me some Joyce Myers because uh, this is just two more minutes, and then I'm going to let y'all go. I'm going to pray because Joyce is a real one. And Joyce said that she used to love commotion so much, right? And she used to love uh, uh, being in her feelings so much that when peace came, it was boring to her. And I remember one time sitting around and my life is such in a peaceful state that I was like, well, that's a little boring. And the Holy Spirit said, no, it's not boring. This is peace, baby. Peace is what it says it is. It's peace. Every enemy, everything, shalom. Peace. And when you're walking in wisdom, you're walking in peace. Why? Because strategically you move when you move in with Christ and the Holy Spirit walks through you you are moving strategically and that's what wise folks do they move strategically so you be like oh okay yeah she's saying that she acting up okay whatever let God God will turn it back around exactly India peace be still we're gonna read one more verse and then we're gonna pray 
He said her ways are uh, her ways are plentiness, and all her paths are peace. She is like a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who retain her. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. And by understanding, he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths were broken up and clouds dropped down the dew. My son, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. That's what wisdom would do for you. You would be discreet. So I tell you, when they trying to come up and no, no, I'm on my Tyler Perry, I'm being discreet. I don't got to argue with you. I don't got to say this. I don't got to say, listen, listen, people want to know why me and Cora Jakes have the relationship and why she's wearing the waist trimmer. God told me to speak a rim of word in her life. Prophet is ain't before my name, but the Holy Spirit spoke through me. And what I said to her, she knew that it was God. Your gifts make room for you. I didn't have to go out my way. I didn't have to hit up this person and hit up that person to be seen. All I do is walk in wisdom, let Holy Spirit lead, and he does something new. So yeah, people are mad, but that's their problem. As long as I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, in Jesus' name, living right, doing right. There's order to things. When it's time, he will have me go to seminary school and do what he needs me to do. But right now, my objective is to please God and not man. Remember, one week it was Hosea, 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 throwing psalms at him. And the next week it was crucify him. My God, it's a word. You don't move for man. You don't move for man. You don't move for man. You move to please God. Your objective is to please God. Do what God says and he will back it up. So like Pastor Sam said, so now people are like, who is this girl? Here comes Fallon, a.k.a. Foul God, who's unorthodox, not trained, but fully equipped in wisdom. He said, yeah, that part, you do it right. You move and you do what God told you to do. Every great leader that you have seen, people have tried to shut and try to sit them down because that is nothing but a Pharisee spirit. And you have to make sure that you're not allowing Pharisees to dim your light. You keep moving in God and doing what God told you to do. I'm going to end it on that and we'll be back tomorrow. You do what God told you to do. Because it is, you need, you need this wisdom and you worrying about what everybody is saying and what everybody is doing is clouding your wisdom. You just focus on getting this in, digesting this word. That's it. And you move in love. And I don't have to, I don't have to call out nobody's names. I don't have to do none of that because like Holy Spirit told me yesterday, touch not my anointing. I know what they doing is wrong. I know what she said and based her lives subliminally taking shots at you is wrong. But touch not my anointed because there's still a gift in her. She might be moving through flesh, but there's still a gift in her. So you make sure you don't talk about mine. So I had to check myself too. And that's what David did. That's why David was always the better man. So they can say what they want. But long as I know I'm grounded on the word over here. And that my ministry is not based on bashing someone. It's uplifting you. I don't got to bash somebody to, 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 to get deep into your spirit. That's what the Holy Spirit is for. But nobody wants to rely on the Holy Spirit. They want to come. They want to do lives. They want to preach. And, and it's, it's a bunch of flesh. It's a bunch of them. But over here, we move through the Holy Spirit. You, you don't even really hear messages about the Holy Spirit. Why? When Jesus left so we can have it. That's why he, just, he ascended back to heaven. He said, I can't stay. Because if I stay, you won't have the, you, the helper. You won't have the helper. You won't have the Holy Ghost. King James Version says the Holy Ghost. We want to talk about everything else, but what's going to obtain us? How can we dig deep? How can we, how, the Bible says too, how do you resist Satan? By submitting to God. How do you submit to God? By listening to my, dec my decrees and my precepts. Learning me. My God, it's a word. Father God, I come to you right now. God, I thank you for this rumor word. I thank you that you have called us up from three days a week to five days a week. I thank you for my sisters and brothers who have got on early, God. They were up. They were waiting for their rumor word. Father God, I pray that it permeate in their soul. I pray that this word will be rooted in their heart. I pray that they will that they will take these scriptures and take them home and read it on a on a lunch breaks. Read it at home, Father God. I pray that they will learn to have an intimate relationship with you for real, Father God. I'm praying for everyone who has a 
Pharisee spirit, God, that is stuck in traditions and religion. Father God, we are praying that they will come and have a relationship with you. Father God, we are praying for those that come and come against us, that try to oppress us, God. We're praying that you do a new thing in their heart, God. We're praying that you do a new thing in their life, God, because we know, God, that the more we seek you, the more we serve you, God, we know that we have a covenant with you, God. So we thank you in advance, God, for every powerful thing that you're doing in our life. We thank you for every powerful entity that you're doing in our life, God. We thank you for it in the mighty name of Jesus. Man, we thank you, God. We thank you, God. Is someone on here that is idolizing? You're idolizing a prophet. You're idolizing a minister. And you have dimmed away from your walk. You have dimmed away from what God told you to do so you can idolize. And God said, I need you to get back because there's a flock that belongs to you. He said, you're, you're moving and you're helping them. But I'm trying to do the promises that I promised you. And if you want to do both, you can do both. But you cannot, you cannot be moved out of your purpose and your promise. He says you have forfeit your promise to do what the, to do to, 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 to do what he called them to do. He said, I need you to get back into position. He said, you didn't properly seek me. He said, because you was idolized of who they are, you left your position to do what they called, what they told you that God told them to do. He said, and it's not so because you didn't seek me. He said, you didn't fully seek me. Most prophets come to confirm. Because the truth is, God usually comes to you first. Or even if he sends the prophet first, he comes to you and he, and, and he confirms it. Listen, we got to get back. We got to get back into position. There's some promises. Listen, we are living in the last days. We're living in the last days. I'm telling you, we living in the last days. And there's some promises that God has promised people. And he's a promise keeper. And he's trying to make sure that he fulfills those things before we get caught up in the rapture. I'm glad you didn't either, Nikki. I told you, I told you God got something for you. You thinking all of this stuff is coming against you to hurt you, but God got something for you. That's all I got. Y'all got your way. <laughs> we here five days a week, but listen, I'm not reluctant no more. You know, it's what God told me, put in your heart. And I prayed about it because I told you, I said, I wasn't moving until God told me. To move. I don't care how much they tell me to get up on here and, and try to make me feel good. I don't, I love y'all to death, but I don't really go by what y'all say. I go by what God said. God said, you seek me all week. And ask me, should I come on five days a week? But I tell, I put a waist trimmer in your, in your head. I put a book in your head and you walked out on faith and did that like that. One time. You asked me one time and went, but now you won't keep asking me. Am I supposed to come on five days? Am I supposed to come on five days? Yes, go on and be great. I pray that today bless you. I will see you tomorrow at 6 a.m. Yes, Treese, he's a promise keeper, baby. He's a promise keeper. Look how he promised you. Look what he promised you. He restored you, right? And he gave you everything that you, you know, nothing could never compare to that loss, but he restored. And that's what he does. Because when everybody was judging you, how you were mourning the loss of your baby, you kept him first and you stayed close to him. And now here you sitting here pregnant and, and, and I'm prophesying that and declaring and decreeing that y'all get married. Don't play house. Y'all get married. Y'all do it right. So he can, so you can have a real covenant, a healthy covenant. Amen. So listen, I love you guys. Um, I told you, I want to sow a seed. Y'all know how to do it. Uh, pray, uh, Facebook, all the stuff be in the link in the description and, in, um, Instagram, y'all can DM me. I will see y'all tomorrow at 6 a.m., baby. We are ready and to go Monday through Friday. Tell a sister, tell a brother, I love you. Look at that. My sister said, wedding date set, sis. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Look at God. Hallelujah. Look at God. Coco said, do Zell, please. All right, Coco. I believe I got a sell. So I got to check it out to see um, what I did with that. So I'm definitely going to um, hit you up with that information. I'm going to check it out. And we and look, Facebook is dropping hearts for you, T. My baby said the wedding date. Uh, Nikki said, congrats. Because you went through a lot. 
and God blessed you. All right, guys, I'm rambling now. I'll see y'all tomorrow. I love you guys. Pray to slay. Pray to slay, guys. I see y'all tomorrow, 6 a.m. sharp.